Next up, the now legendary Impact Engineered Awards Program, where some of the most distinguished members of the engineering community honor some of their most accomplished colleagues. And to guide us through it, it's my pleasure to introduce Kara Miller. Many of you know Dr. Miller from the column she writes for the Boston Globe about the latest big ideas in research. For the past 10 years, she hosted Innovation Hub, which aired on public radio stations all over the country. Those of us at ASME are grateful to Kara for serving on the advisory committee of the Lemelson Foundation, which is a major supporter of iShow. Please welcome Dr. Kara Miller. Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Um, you know, I um, talked to a, a friend of mine who's an engineer in advance of doing this, and um, he, he pointed out to me that so often um, we don't realize the real impact that engineers have, the ripples that go out from the things they do. And he, he gave me this example. He said, you know, lifespans in the U.S. just about double between 1900 and 2000. Um, and there's almost one profession to thank for that change. Um, and it's, it's not just that engineers created, innovated things, had physical creations, um, were inventors, but it's also the implementation, right? The systems that came out of those innovations that had that sort of big, big ripple impact. Um, and that's really part of the reason I'm so excited to be with you today because of that, that idea of, of the power of impact. Um, my own life for the last dozen or so years has been about telling stories that come from science, that come from academia, that come from engineers, and bringing them to a larger public. And one of the things that so, has been so striking to me is that very often the scientists, the engineers um, who are, they're, they're so anxious to tell their stories. And yet as they aim to tell those stories, the people on the other end um, who are there to receive their stories, the journalists, they are also anxious to receive the stories. And yet the two hands reach out. And sometimes I think it's hard for them to connect. Um, so I think one of the great things about the people that you're gonna hear about today, um, that they, get that stage, that they get that stage to tell their story um, and they get that, that impact that they're making amplified. Um, and the people that we're gonna hear about today, they didn't just build physical stuff, though you're certainly hear, gonna hear some of that. They've also changed our mindset about who we are, right? They, they help redesign, and this is what the best engineers do, they help redesign how we think about where do we belong? What can we pull off? Who are we? Um, engineering really shifts those expectations. And I think not enough people realize that. Um, probably every person sitting out there has a friend or a family member who when they hear you're an engineer, you can see like the curtains go up, the wall goes up and they're like, yeah, I can't access that. I do, I, I'm not gonna understand anything that you're going to say. Um, and so I think more and more telling the stories of invention and innovation are so crucial. Um, it's something I have been doing for a long time and I hope to keep doing, um, but bringing those stories to a wider audience allows people to really access the amazing work that so many people that we've been hearing from earlier today and that we'll hear from later in the hour are doing. Um, I wanna, come to the first, um, a first award, which I think is, speaks exactly to what I've been talking about, sort of making those connections, which are so important for people on both ends. Um, so to pre present the Academic Ally Award, I'm gonna turn it over to Kendra Sharp. She's the head of the Office of International Science and Engineering at the National Science Foundation. Kendra, over to you. Oregon State University. 
And for over a decade now, I've been part of the academic community supporting engineering for global development. In doing so, I've had the chance to follow a range of academic efforts that support engineering for global development, innovation, and social entrepreneurship. As many of you know, there's often a tension between traditional engineering education and the curricular flexibility, non-traditional approaches, and emphasis on interdisciplinarity and partnerships required in this space. Given this tension and the many associated hurdles, the time and energy required to grow and sustain these programs cannot be understated. Add to that the challenges of working directly with community partners, offering highly time and resource intensive experiential learning elements, and, well, the work is both intensely challenging and intensely rewarding. Over the course of the pandemic, the need for research that addresses pressing societal challenges at both local and global scales has become even clearer. Many inequities have been laid even more bare, but the current generation of college age students gives me hope. Many want to work on addressing climate change or poverty or food, water or energy security or other challenges. And these types of academic opportunities are critical for their development. I have the distinct privilege of serving now as a senior leader at NSF, where we not only drive our strategy for global engagement, but also collaborate with colleagues across the US government and with our international counterparts. Increasingly, themes that emerge in NSF strategy are mirroring what we've been doing in engineering for global development for years, whether it's having a global focus or an emphasis on addressing societal problems or integrating social scientists and collaborating with community partners or even work where communities themselves drive the research questions and work where equity, inclusivity and social justice are part and parcel of what we do and how we do it. I like to think that other parts of the research community are just catching up to what this community has been doing all along, namely pushing the boundaries of pedagogy and traditional engineering education and research. But of course, that's a biased view. Even so, I'm very proud of our shared research and education community. And with that, please join me in congratulating Penn State on receiving the Academic Ally Award. This is an award that recognizes visionary academic institutions and their innovative pedagogies and research, their partnerships with ASME, and a shared mission to train the future workforce together. Standing up and cultivating cutting edge programs in engineering schools is a difficult proposition. Penn State's College of Engineering has demonstrated a long-term commitment to social innovation and ongoing support for the program and its faculty. So thank you for everything that you do for your students, your faculty, the broader community and our shared profession. And with that, I'm very pleased to present this award to Justin Schwartz, Dean of Engineering at Penn State University, and Esther Adiambo Obonio. Thank you. The, the critical role that engineering has in advancing human, humanity, and thank you mostly to Impact Engineering and all of those involved in our selection for this prestigious award. On behalf of the Penn State College of Engineering, we gratefully accept the Academic Ally Award. More importantly, we thank you for establishing and amplifying the Engineering for Change Research Fellowship Program. We have enthusiastically supported the program since it started and to partner with E4C to make measurable progress towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Much of our work is channeled through our Humanitarian Engineering and Social Entrepreneurship Program, or HESI, and more recently through our Global Building Network, formed as a partnership between Penn State and the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, and led by Professor Esther Abonio, implementing solutions for the built environment around the globe. Critically, Penn State students and faculty who participate in both of these programs are not limited to just the College of Engineering. We welcome all students and faculty contributors from all across all of our campuses. As we all know, we need all perspectives and expertise to innovate and implement solutions. With participants from every college and every facet of Penn State and beyond, we're enthusiastically supporting projects that apply engineering in ways that improve life for all. We are engineering for humanity, and we are proud to partner with E4C in this pursuit. I am personally especially thankful for the leadership of Dr. Esther Abonio, who previously directed HESI and who currently directs the Global Building Network. Professor Abonio, would you like to say a few words as well? Thank you, Dean Schwartz, and thank you, Kendra. I'll briefly echo Dean Schwartz's gratitude. The E4C program is facilitating crucially important work, and we are proud and thankful to be strong supporters 
We are especially proud of our E4C Penn State Fellows, including Julio Diate, who researched the repurposing of cardboard waste to building homes, and Molly Ackman and her team, who worked on developing leading edge tools for low-cost diabetes screening. I've also had the pleasure of partnering with E4C to mentor and advise two teams of E4C Fellows. In 2020, Sung Bang and Julio Diate designed and developed concepts for resilient low-income housing in Kenya and Tanzania. In 2021, Tiffany Lewing and Ali Gazvian advanced these concepts through examining barriers and enablers for scaling the deployment of affordable strategies for resilient housing in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. This work is part of a Belmont Forum project on disaster risk reduction that is partly funded by the National Science Foundation. The output and outcomes that have come out of the work of these 4C fellows is now being used to develop evidence for policy making in collaboration with other the university and the research team of Tanzania's office of prime, of prime minister. They are in charge of disaster risk management for the whole country. E4C fellows are generating knowledge for advancing technologies, protecting the planet and also saving lives. All these incredible, incredible feats are exemplified by the outputs and the outcomes of the Penn State Fund Partnership with Engineering for Change and ASME. We appreciate the recognition and extend our congratulations to our fellow impact engineered honorees. Thank you very much. Esther and Justin, thank you so much. That was great. And it's a perfect uh, actually lead in to the next award. You know, I've, I've been talking this whole time about making connections and so are you. And the next award is the Ecosystem Builder Award. Um, to present that, I'm going to introduce uh, Beatrice Morage, who will present the award. She's a Senior Manager in Sustainability at Philips. Beatrice, over to you. Community has a special place in my heart for one main reason only. Uh, I'm an engineer's daughter. So in that sense, I've, I've been brought up around the engineering community and, and it's always a pleasure to be in this particular kind of sessions. Um, so just get into it. This award celebrates the individuals who stand as the pillars of success and evolution. This award goes to those who lay the foundation for growth, whether it's advocating for the sector, fostering key relationships, or cultivating diverse professional networks. The work they do is vital, and this award speaks to their substantial value. So the winner of this award has played a fundamental role in the ASME iShow, starting as a judge in Aisho Kenya in 2015 and continuing annually. As the ASME team expanded its program support to other tech incubators, this particular person lent his expertise to working with social ventures in the Climate Innovation Center network and connecting his UN Habitat colleagues to the E4C fellowship program to advance their sustainability goals. He has been a TALIS champion and stepped up as a strategic advisor for the EGD committee, where he continues to bring his unique insights and global perspective to the table. May I add that this is also the same individual who introduced me into the ASME community as an ISO judge and mentor. And I always look forward to this particular event, especially for the different countries. Um, we continue to partner together with this individual in our respective organizations. Um, I, I like to say the individual belongs to a sister organization where we work to just increase access to care for underserved communities across the world, mostly looking at three pillars, pillars digital and technology innovation, sustainable business models, and ecosystem engagement. Without further ado, allow me to drum roll, introduce the winner. Dr. Edin Saruk Baha. It's a true honor to receive this award and I'm um, very much thankful and a big, big shout out to all those who always have been ready and willing to team up to innovate and support innovation for the global development and collectively aim to improve access and provide access to quality care all over the world. Um, so yeah, uh, coming in words actually short, but thank you Asme, thank you Aisha, um, Engineer for Change, Engineer for Global Development, United Nations, Philips, Philips Foundation, Beatrice, all others actually I have worked with along this journey for being the platform to make this happen. Thank you.
Thank you so much. You know, uh, it, it's amazing to hear the kind of work that people are doing um, uh, in, in, in to win these awards and the kind of change that you're having. And you see this this power of this ecosystem to to push this change around. Um, we're going to move to a different kind of award now, um, but also kind of an ecosystem award. Um, and this is an award uh, that is looking at the woman champion, Powering Impact. Um, to present that award, I'm going to turn it over to Carlotta Arthur. She's director of the Henry and Luz Foundation's Claire Booth Luz Program for Women in STEM. Carlotta, over to you. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here. It's with great pleasure that I present the Women Champion Powering Impact Award to Dr. Carol Dahl, former executive director of the Limelson Foundation. A recognition of bold trailblazers, this award is presented to women at the forefront of technology for good. By putting the spotlight on talented leaders committed to engineering global development, we reaffirm ASME's commitment to achieving gender equity in the social sector. Carol's faith in the value of ASME's ISHO and what it could contribute to impact invention was catalytic for ISHO when it was launched as an international accelerator in 2015. As executive director of the Limelson Foundation, Carol, Carol worked tireless, tirelessly to advance the foundation's mission of improving lives through invention including supporting equitable pathways to invention and innovation, cultivating the next generation of inventors and innovation talent, champion, championing an invention education and catalyzing a diverse and inclusive movement through InventEd. Prior to joining the Limelson Foundation, Carol served as the founding director of the Global Health Discovery Program at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation leading the development of Grand Challenges initiatives, innovation programs which have been replicated around the world. Previous roles include Vice President for Strategic Partnerships at Biospect Inc., now Path, Pathworks Diagnostics, and Founding Director of the Office of Technology and Industrial Relations at the National Cancer Institute. This is just a small snapshot of Carol's trailblazing leadership. As director for the Claire Booth Luce Program for Women in STEM at the Henry Luce Foundation, the US's largest private funder of women's science, engineering, and mathematics higher education, which also promotes equity, diversity, and inclusion throughout the eco STEM ecosystem, I'm a great admirer of Carol and her trailblazing work to drive change in the STEM ecosystem for gender equity and positive social impact. Carol, it is an honor to have the opportunity to work with you. You are an inspiration to those of us who promote diverse and an innovative STEM talent and inclusive innovation and innovation and invention pathways. I'm thrilled to present you with the Women Champion Powering Impact Award. Thank you for honoring me with this significant award. It means so much coming to me from ASME, an organization that so clearly shares my belief that invention and innovation can solve humanity's biggest challenges and improve lives and communities both in the US and around the world. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that any impact that I've contributed to has been because of my amazing colleagues that I've worked with over my career, first in government, at the Gates Foundation, and most recently during my decade-long tenure as the executive director of the Lemelson Foundation, where support for improving lives through invention continues, including sponsoring iShow. It's been while at Lemelson that I really came to know the work of ASME in fostering innovation to address the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, as we became significant supporters of ASME's iShow. The Engineering for Global Development programs like E4C and iShow that we just heard about the new iShow Idea Lab are having a measurable impact on quality of life and meeting the UN SDGs. Supporting inventors and would-be entrepreneurs and taking their ideas to reality and impact 
I also believe that the full creative potential of the global population to address humanity's greatest challenges has not yet been tapped. And so we need to advocate for fostering greater equity in engineering, both in terms of increasing access to the path of invention and entrepreneurship, but also increasing access to the inventions that engineers create, especially in underserved communities. And I know those are values that are shared by ASME. I'm very grateful for this award and coming from such an important institution. And for all of you here today who share the vision of impact engineering, again, my deepest thanks. Thanks, Carol. Um, I, I'll just add, Carol is also a special person to me. I've been involved with the Lomelson Foundation for a long time. And I remember when we first started having conversations, I think over coffee at MIT when we were at uh, conferences, um, she really strikes you with her passion for, as she talked about, solutions. Um, and I, you know, a, another story just about women in this field, I remember, um, and, and the sort of power of, of uh, lifting up women is, I remember um, talking to a woman who had been in a state science fair, and she'd gotten very high up in the science fair, and um, she was working on re-engineering battery technology, and a one of the people judging said to her, um, you know, some a, a girl like you, I don't think it could have done this research. And of course, she had it, indeed done the research, and it had a major profound impact on her. She did still pursue engineering, um, but it made her doubt herself more, and you know, you it, it drove home to me the importance of having mentors, having people, having connections um, that can help lift up that network of women. Um, again, continuing with this theme of connection and impact on other people, um, I'm going to uh, shift it over to our next award, which focuses on both organizational power and on uh, sustainable development, which keeps coming back today. Um, and here to present that next award is uh, John Wayne from UNHCR. John, over to you. Here we go. Thank you, Dr. Miller, and thank you, uh, Impact Engineering colleagues, for um, an excellent uh, program of presentations this evening. This Impact Driven Award is in recognition of organizations who understand the vast impact of technology-based solutions. This award celebrates those who are committed to working to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. As we approach 2030, it becomes increasingly clear that providing solutions to underserved markets and communities will require patient investment and a hands-on approach. The Autodesk Foundation has a history of patient investment and visionary programming, supporting diverse organizations that work on the front lines of social impact. The relationship with Engineering for Change, our extended family, it started in 2016 and has grown into um, an impact program that yielded fellows such as uh, Dima, who joined me on the virtual stage earlier. These will be the technicians of the future that will carry this visionary message forward. Personally, I first came across the Autodesk Foundation in 2016 when I was providing global surge capacity for HQ. We were developing a settlement planning toolkit, a collection of tools and products that would guide and support young engineers in the field as they carry out the important work uh, developing shelter solutions and planning settlements. I plucked up the courage to um, approach the Autodesk Foundation and ask them for a couple of Autodesk licenses that would support these young engineers in the field. To my immense surprise, they came back with a fabulously generous offer. And today we have over 150 Autodesk licenses assigned to uh, engineers, architects, and other technicians in a multitude of countries throughout the globe. The demand for these licenses is growing and growing uh, to a point where we now have to prioritize and we ask colleagues why they need them so we, we can assign licenses. 
Um, it's been an immensely generous um, contribution um, coming to millions uh, and millions of dollars. Um, in addition, uh, the Autodesk Foundation supported us with some training programs because these are sophisticated tools. Uh, this is cutting edge software um, that we do need to uh, enhance the capacity of, of colleagues who, who have possibly never used such tools. So it was a generous contribution to give us additional technical capacity. We also um, brought the Autodesk Foundation to the largest refugee camp in the world, Kutubalong Camp in, in Bangladesh. Um, Bobby Casey, who's been a great friend and mentor from the Autodesk Foundation, went all the way to Kutubalong. And they developed an inspirational video that in 29 won a gold medal telly award. And I would strongly suggest all of you online to just have a look at that video because it, it clearly outlines the work we as settlement planners and engineers have to do in the field. UNHCR estimates that there are 84 million forcefully displaced people in the world today. 20 million of those are refugees. An incredible 50 million of those are what we term IDPs, internally displaced persons. My current role is the uh, senior shelter cluster coordinator in Yemen. I am just back from a mission today, actually, to the west and um, south coast of Yemen, where the shifting front lines in this six-year conflict has led to a new displacement of over 50,000 people. We are doing site assessments and we are coming up with emergency shelter solutions. The need for engineering support, the need for technical support is immense to improve the conditions that I have seen over the last few days. Um, UNHCR is committed to finding creative and innovative solutions um, to support and enhance settlement and refugee problems around the world. Uh, we are facing new challenges every year that requires constant search for innovative technologies and new technical approaches. Um, we need new partnerships with um, international agencies, uh, other organizations, academia, private sector. This relationship with Engineering for Change has been hugely beneficial. Champions such as the Autodesk Foundation are doing incredible work. Without their continued support, we would struggle uh, with a lot of these complex technical challenges that we face. It is therefore with great pleasure and deep um, personal satisfaction to present this award to the Executive Director of the Autodesk Foundation, Mr. Joe Spicer. Congratulations, Joe. Joe, it looks like you're muted. <laughs> I was saying some really brilliant, wonderful things. So you'll, Sorry, you'll um, forgive me if I'm off cadence. Um, John, thank you so much. And, and um, uh, we are so grateful to be a part of this community, <clears throat> excuse me, with um, AME E4C. I remember um, first coming across the organization when I uh, uh, took the helm at uh, the Autodesk Foundation. And um, we've had uh, a really fruitful, engaged relationship um, over the last seven or eight years now. And many of the, the presenters and award winners today, including Carol, John, um, Iana, Bridges to Prosperity, these are the people and organizations that we've been partnering with for many years. And it really is a wonderful community. Um, and so thank you, we're incredibly grateful. Specifically, the Research Fellowship Program is an excellent example of the type of work that E4C does and one that aligns perfectly with the Autodesk Foundation's mission, which is to support the design and creation of innovative solutions to the world's most pressing social and environmental challenges. The nonprofits and, and startups that the Autodesk Foundation um, invests in benefit greatly from the expertise of the engineers, the designers um, that come through this program. 
Um, and you've seen these examples today, for instance, with Bridges to Prosperity. So we've we, we've renewed our support for this work. Um, we are ex I am very personally excited to see what innovations emerge from the next cohort. And thank you for having us as a part of this community. Thank you for this award and keep up the fantastic work to create the sustainable, resilient and equitable future through engineering that we need to see. Joe, thank you so much. The, you know, it's amazing to hear John and then Joe um, talk about uh, the, a problem, this problem of 84 million displaced people. Um, and then how do you bring to bear expertise in engineering? How do you couple that with need? How do you uh, loop in both innovation there and then how you sort of push that innovation out and scale it up um, you know, I look at the uh, lower thirds of these uh, of the um, award ceremony and this idea of engineering for change, and that is that's really it. Is like how do you bring, you know, how do you have this equation of both engineering um, and uh, and need, and how do you bring it together to create real change? Um, I want to uh, get into our final award of the hour which is the Change Maker Award. I know people have been voting on this, I think almost right up till the last minute here. Um, so this is one that, that's been changing. Uh, and to present that award, I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Neil Yo. He's the CEO and founder of 1.5. Neil, it's over to you. Hello. Yes. Hi, my name is Neil Yeo. I'm the CEO and founder of 1.5. Uh, I myself, I'm based out of New York, but originally from Australia. Um, I was a robotics engineer from undergrad, and I totally understand how important it is to have engineers solving the most critical challenges. Uh, throughout my career, um, I ended up like finding my way to climate change after working in the oil and gas industry and seeing how engineers can also contribute to a lot of bad. So I'm just absolutely wonderfully inspired by engineers here that are trying to do something more impactful in this world. Um, so as 1.5, we, we try to democratize access to experts. We work with climate technology, early stage startups in the services and also finance sectors. Um, so if you're ever looking for experts where the entrepreneurs and residents trying to help commercialize the next um, generation of impactful startups and solutions. Uh, for the Changemaker Award, uh, it is nominated by you and selected by you. This award highlights the achievements and recognizes the potential for engineers, emerging leaders, and their organizations. Um, first of all, thank you for everyone that voted and the four shortlisted awardees. Like all your work is critical as engineers. As they're saying that you all deserve this award really, really much a lot more than anyone else here. Uh, so with that, this year's Change Maker Award is, you know, we had a bit of a foreshadowing, Kiribit, uh, co-founded by Rashab Nanawasi and Aman Sari Sariya. Um, the Kiribit team is leveraging technology to change the way mental health is addressed in India, and Kiribit provides exposure therapy via virtual reality to those affected by mental health disorders under the supervision of mental health professionals. So without further ado, Rashab, Aman, over to you. Well, a big thank you to our team and everyone that saw potential in our idea of advancing mental health treatment using immersive technologies. Thank you to ASME and E4C and a special thank you to the Resolution Project and our Resolution Mentors for pushing us towards this opportunity. We are honored to be held alongside such wonderful nominees. Everyone here is a change maker, not just the award winners, but uh, also the organizers, speakers, and the audience. I believe we have all won today because we are all here to celebrate something amazing. Yeah, we've had a long journey, but there is still a long way to go. Uh, we want to make sure that our project is based in um, extensive research and ethics. So it's really important for us to understand the sensitivity and, and the nuances of what we're dealing with. Um, we're at the starting point of our career, but we're, we're excited to have more impact as we move forward. Um, we hope together with all the teams, we can serve as an inspiration for others uh, to convert their impactful ideas uh, into reality. 
And once again, we're, we're really grateful for the award. Thank you so much. Unmute myself here. Thank you so much. You know, it, it's also, it feels like such a timely, um, you know, focus is the, the idea of focusing on mental health, especially coming out of the last couple of years and um, to think about engineering a solution or a way in to help a lot of people um, with mental health seems like a particularly important thing right now. Um, it, I've, it's been an amazing lineup of winners this hour. Um, it's been a privilege for me to be here today to hear about the work of so many amazing folks, to hear about, as you have, the impact they're having, the stories that they've told us about that impact, and whether it's on water delivery systems or medicine delivery or women in engineering um, or lifting up communities, which in some ways everybody is doing, um, or making change in a very sustainable way. Um, thanks so much for having me here. What a pleasure. Congratulations to all the winners. And I'm going to hand back over the reins to Yana. Thank you, Kara. You've been phenomenal. Um, also navigating some clips here and there. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> Obviously a pro. Um, so congratulations to all of our award winners today. And a huge thank you to also all of our award presenters who uh, took the time to prepare their remarks and, and join us today. Um, each of you in your own way, you're all true champions of sustainable development. Um, Kara, also, I just want to note, I've been a fan of yours for some time, and it's a real treat to actually see you in, in sort of yeah. in real life, see your face <laughs> for a change. Is that just your... In real life. In real life, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's a, yeah, just a, instead of just hearing your words on the radio, it's, it's now been a pleasure. 